Your thyroid regulates an enormous amount of processes in your body. If your thyroid is dysfunctional, you can fall into depression. It is also associated with a whole range of other mental problems. In thyroid hormones, serotonin and mood, of synergy and significance in the adult brain, they say that disorders of the thyroid gland are frequently associated with severe mental disturbances. It is well established that thyroid hormones are essential for both the development and maturation of the human brain, affecting such diverse events as neuronal processing and integration, glial cell proliferation, myelination and the synthesis of key enzymes required for neurotransmitter synthesis. Some other symptoms of a dysfunctional thyroid include metabolic syndrome and cold intolerance. Weight gain. In this study they say that small differences in thyroid function are associated with up to 5 kg difference in body weight. The amount of energy we use while resting is high in hyperthyroidism and low in hypothyroidism. Inflammatory bowel disease. And note that for some of these symptoms it's difficult to know which is cause and which is effect. It could also be that both are effects of a deeper problem. Carotid arterial plaquing and strokes. Hair loss. Dry skin. Infertility and reproductive dysfunction. And weakened immune system. The thyroid also affects our production of serotonin. Plasma serotonin levels have been shown to correlate positively with T3 thyroid hormone concentration. Also the synthesis of serotonin tends to be high in cases of hyperthyroidism and low in cases of hypothyroidism. In this study they state that the influence of the thyroid system on neurotransmitters, particularly serotonin and norepinephrine, which putatively play a major role in the regulation of mood and behavior, may contribute to the mechanisms of mood modulation. And in this study they say that thyroid hormone application of euthyroid rodents increased cortical or whole brain serotonin, 5-HTP and 5-HIAA concentrations in 10 studies. Begin by healing your gut. When you have a leaky gut, large proteins enter your bloodstream. Some of these proteins, like gliadin, which is a component of gluten, are very similar to the tissue in your thyroid. When your immune system attacks these invading proteins, it also attacks your thyroid. Irritable bowel syndrome tends to be associated with leaky gut. To heal your gut, it's important to stay away from foods you're allergic or sensitive to. In this study, they say that there is a recognized association between the symptoms of IBS food hypersensitivity and in some cases true food allergy. When intestinal permeability was measured pre and post provocation with suspect foods, it was demonstrated that these patients developed abnormal permeability. Try to avoid pro-inflammatory foods as much as you possibly can. These include modern foods like refined flours, sugar and high fructose corn syrup and industrial oils high in omega-6. You might notice what all these foods have in common. They have all been invented recently. Our bodies haven't adapted yet. There also seems to be a link between insulin resistance and diabetes and thyroid dysfunction. In this study they say that the frequency of thyroid dysfunction in diabetic patients is higher than that of the general population and up to a third of patients with type 1 diabetes ultimately develop thyroid dysfunction. Insulin resistance and most cases of diabetes are caused by excessive amounts of refined flours, sugar and high fructose corn syrup. My best tip for increasing your thyroid function, neurotransmitter levels and overall health is to limit sugar and other refined carbohydrates to the absolute minimum. Stick to delicious whole foods. The next step is to get adequate amounts of important vitamins and minerals. Start by optimizing your iodine levels together with selenium. Iodine and selenium works together in the thyroid. 
In the study, dietary iodine and selenium interact to affect thyroid hormone metabolism of rats. They say that high iodine intake when selenium is deficient may permit thyroid tissue damage. And in this study, they say that adequate selenium nutrition supports efficient thyroid hormone synthesis and metabolism and protects the thyroid gland from damage by excessive iodide exposure. In regions of combined severe iodine and selenium deficiency, normalization of iodine supply is mandatory before initiation of selenium supplementation in order to prevent hypothyroidism. Selenium supplementation has also been shown to help in autoimmune thyroid diseases like Hashimoto's disease and Graves' disease. Vitamin D is another important vitamin which we have discussed several times in this course. There is a significantly higher prevalence of vitamin D deficiency in people with autoimmune thyroid disease. In this study, they say that low levels of vitamin D have also been associated with thyroid disease, such as Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Similarly, patients with new onset Graves disease were found to have decreased 25 hydroxy vitamin D concentrations. Another vitamin which might be important is vitamin B12. The next step is reduce the stress in your life. Stress is associated with autoimmune thyroid diseases. Practice stress management and relaxation techniques. If you haven't tried meditation, I recommend it. We have multiple science-backed techniques for regaining your inner peace in our course Master Your Inner Peace. A quick fix for stress levels that will work wonders for 90% of the population is the batch email and cell phone use. Close your email and put away your phone for most of the day. Only check them once or three times a day. If you want some stress management in pill form, the amino acid tyrosine might be what you're looking for. These researchers found that stressed out mice had significantly decreased levels of thyroid hormones. Tyrosine supplementation significantly increased the levels of thyroid hormones. They say that, after 4 weeks of chronic stress, dopamine and norepinephrine levels in the pallium, hippocampus and hypothalamus were significantly decreased. Levels of dopamine in the pallium and hippocampus as well as levels of norepinephrine in the pallium and hypothalamus were restored by L-tyrosine supplementation. Lastly, we have alcohol. In the study Impact of Alcohol Use on Thyroid Function, they say that Alcohol has been reported to cause direct suppression of thyroid function by cellular toxicity and indirect suppression by blunting thyrotropin-releasing hormone response. It causes a decrease of peripheral thyroid hormones during chronic use and in withdrawal. And that, the effect of alcohol on the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis is significant and alcohol consumption affects almost all aspects of the functioning of the thyroid gland. Given the comorbidity of mood disorders in alcoholism and the relation of mood disorders with hypothyroidism, these findings open up interesting theoretical possibilities to explain the increased occurrence of mood disorders in alcoholism. To conclude, stay away from foods you're allergic or sensitive to. Limit modern foods to the absolute minimum. This is everything that includes refined flour, sugar and high fructose corn syrup and industrial oils high in omega-6. Basically the middle aisles in supermarket and grocery stores. A lot of these food items can sit on a shelf for months or years without rotting. Said in another way, stick to delicious whole foods. Some of you will also benefit from ditching all kinds of corn products like bread and cereal. Get adequate levels of both iodine and selenium. Some sources of iodine are iodine-enriched salt and seafood in general, but especially kelp. Brazil nuts are packed with selenium, and 2-5 to five nuts are more than enough per day. You can also get your iodine and selenium from supplements. Get enough vitamin D from sun exposure and supplementation. Most people need supplementation in winter. Some need it even in summer. 
The same goes for vitamin B12. A lot of people are deficient and supplements are cheap. Vegans especially need to supplement with B12. Become master of your own stress levels. Tyrosine supplements might help you some other way. And lastly, limit your alcohol consumption. If you want to learn more about the thyroid, I recommend reading Chris Kresser's blog post on thyroid dysfunction. But do a fact check before you do anything drastic. You should do the same for this course. Thank you for watching.